So hello and welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory. My name is Mark Radici and in this video we're going to talk about what's up in the night sky in August 2023. And I'm super excited this month. We've got one of the best meteor showers of the year, the Perseids, and this year it coincides with the new moon. We've actually got two full moons this month, two super moons, the beautiful planet Saturn is in opposition and of course we still get to enjoy the beauty of our own galaxy the Milky Way and if you can't wait for night to fall there's always some solar observing so if you haven't seen my video about the solar imaging techniques and making time lapses of provinces then check out this video. So we'll start on the 1st of August fittingly enough on the 1st of August which is a full moon. Now the moon's orbit is not circular so on the 1st of August it's actually closest to the Earth, so we have a super full moon. And this makes it 14% bigger and 30% brighter than a full moon when it's at its furthest point from the Earth. But to be honest with you, I don't really see the difference, but you can queue up numerous newspaper articles already. Because not only do we have a full moon on the 1st of August, we have a full moon on the 31st of August. So we have a two super full moons within the month. So with those big bright full moons drowning out the summer Milky Way, if you want to see the beauty of our own galaxy, then go out around a few days either side of New Moon, which this year is on the 16th of August. Now the summer Milky Way, this is where all the deep sky action is, this is where all the beautiful objects are that make up our own galaxy. And there are so many objects to see and photograph. So let me know what your favourite object in the summer Milky Way is. Now this year, Luckily, new moon nearly coincides with the peak of the Perseid meteor shower. Now this starts in mid-July, but it actually peaks on the night of the 12th to the 13th of August. And what we're seeing here is tiny, tiny little dust grains that have been left behind by the comet Swift-Tuttle, and that did its last pass through the inner solar system in 1992. And what's happening is the Earth is actually colliding with the tiny little dust grains that were emitted by the comet in its cometary tail. And those dust grains are slamming into the Earth's atmosphere at immense speed, and they leave these little bright incandescent uh, trails as they burn up in the atmosphere. And that's what we see as meteors, that's what we see as shooting stars. Now they appear to radiate from the constellation Perseus and that's simply because that's the direction the Earth is travelling and they're nothing to do with the constellation Perseus per se. Those stars are much, much further away. And that's what's so wonderful about this year is that the new moon is on the 16th of August. So with the peak on that night of the 12th to the 13th, there's only a tiny little thin crescent moon rising in the dawn sky. So we can actually get to see all those fainter meteors without the moon drowning them out. So my advice is to get away from the light pollution, get out of the, get away from the city lights and try and find somewhere with a good horizon towards the sort of northeast, eastern part of the sky. And Perseus will slowly rise after dark. So give it a few hours. It's probably best around after midnight into the small hours of the morning. And that's as the radiant just rises higher and higher into the sky. And they predict what's called a zenithal hourly rate. And that's with the no moon, no light pollution, and with the radiant directly overhead, around about 120 meteors per hour. Now we never get to really see that. It typically is around a half of that amount. So we'll get to see one me meteor or a few every minute. And my experience, what happens is you get to see a whole burst, a few, and then you'll get several minutes with nothing really happening. So what I'm hoping to do is go out uh, to our dark sky site on Salisbury Plain. I'm going to set the camera up, make a time lapse of the meteors going through Perseus. And while that camera is clicking away, I'll be then doing some deep sky observing as well. And of course, if it is inevitably cloudy, as it always is up here in England, you can still go out a few days either side and catch some of the meteors. So staying with our solar system objects, we've got the planets in really two groups this month. We've got the major planets really in the dawn sky, in the morning sky, and these are Jupiter and Saturn. These are both easily visible to the naked eye. Jupiter's at magnitude minus 2.6, so it's the easily the brightest star you'll see in the morning sky. You'll be able to see the moons of Jupiter with your with binoculars or a small telescope and it's quite good fun tracking them as they move around the planet. Saturn is fainter and, and it's quite a lot lower at magnitude plus four sorry and quite a lot fainter at magnitude 0.4 
uh, you'll need a small telescope to be able to see the rings of Saturn. So I always find Saturn to be such a beautiful object to look at. You've got those beautiful ring systems and of course you can see some of the moons of Saturn as well. So at the end of August we have Saturn at opposition on the night of the 26th to the 27th of August. So this is when Saturn's at its closest point to the Earth and therefore it's also at its brightest. And we're going to really start to see Saturn's rings starting to narrow up now so they're only tilted to us at 8 degrees way down from its maximum of 27 degrees. Now in 2025 we'll actually have a plane crossing the earth will be directly lined up with the rings of Saturn and then we actually edge on so Saturn's rings are actually going to disappear from our point of view. Now these two planets are joined by Uranus and Neptune. Now these are quite a lot fainter. Uranus is at magnitude 5.7 and Neptune at magnitude 7.8. So you'll need binoculars or a small telescope to pick these out. Now they're pretty much tiny, tiny discs in the telescope, but what I find is it's their color that gives them away. So Uranus is a sort of pale green and Neptune is a blue color. And a good one for your diary is the morning of the 9th of August. You're going to have the Hyades star cluster, the Pleiades star cluster, Jupiter, and the crescent moon all in the same part of the sky. So it'll be quite a photographic sight to see. And interestingly, you can then use the moon to then find Uranus, which will only be one degree away. And if you've got your finder scope on the telescope, and if you've got a pair of binoculars or something like that, they'll typically have a five degree field of view. So if you've got the moon in the center of the field of view, you'll easily have Uranus in the field of view as well. So we'll swing over to the inner terrestrial planets, the rocky planets, and they're all pretty close to the sun this time of year. So Mercury is at maximum elongation on the evening of the 10th of August. It's going to be very low, particularly for us up here at 51 degrees north. If you're further south than me, you'll have a better chance of seeing it. So Venus actually crosses from the evening sky to the morning sky on the 13th of August. It's some seven degrees from the sun. So please be careful. You don't want to accidentally observe the sun with your camera or with your telescope. And unfortunately, Mars is pretty unobservable. We're still waiting for Mars to come out from the other side of the sun. We're not really going to see Mars until later in 2024 in preparation for its opposition in January 2025. So really then August is a fantastic month for observing. We've got the beauty of the summer Milky Way to enjoy in the middle of the month when we're at new moon which actually coincides this year with the peak of the Perseid meteor shower. We've got Saturn at opposition on the 27th of August and we've got two full supermoons, one on the 1st of August and one on the 31st of August. And if you are getting up early, then make sure you enjoy those beautiful planets in the morning sky. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.